An ultra-Orthodox man attacked participants at a gay pride march in Jerusalem, wounding six. But that's not the most amazing part. The most amazing fact about this might be that that's not the first time he's even done this. So we've got uh, reports from some of the, the people who saw it happen. We might have some photos as well. It's pretty amazing. Um, the the pho photographers and videographers were able to catch him taking the knife out, literally as he began his spree, uh, some of the footage of him running through the crowd. Uh, so well, one person, Shai Avior, says, uh, we heard people screaming, everyone ran for cover, and there were bloodied people on the ground. As I said, six people were wounded. At least two of them were seriously wounded. Uh, there are no reports yet of anyone having been killed. Uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called it a despicable hate crime, and President Reuven Rivlin warned that social intolerance could spell disaster for Israel. Israel, of course, being known as... Uh, outside of the ultra-Orthodox, an extremely tolerant country when it comes to, uh, uh, to, to gay rights. Uh, Tel Aviv specifically known as being sort of one of the international sites that's most tolerant towards that community. Uh, but as I said, this, this guy, this is not the first time he's attacked a gay pride march and, uh, and knifed people. Police said he was the same assailant jailed for the stabbing of three marchers at a similar Jerusalem event in 2005. Israeli media said the suspect had been released from prison just several weeks ago. So he spent close to 10 years in prison. As soon as he gets out, he goes back and begins knifing people. I think this time, keep him in for at least 12 years, I think. Maybe 13. Now, I wonder if he was a Palestinian who had knifed three Israelis before, whether they'd have let him out of prison in 10 years. Or if they'd have called him a terrorist and never, ever, 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 ever let him out of prison, right? Which, by the way, it turns out you shouldn't have let him out of prison. That would have been the correct thing to do, right? Yeah. So, but if you knife three Israelis and you happen to be... Uh, you know, ultra orthodox uh, uh, Israeli citizen. Yeah, ten years to ought to do it. Let's let you back out on the street, see if you yeah. stab more people. But look, guys, the common bond. How is it escaping people? I don't understand. People who take their sex literally are fundamentalists. Yeah, fundamentalists will do crazy stuff because they think God is talking to them and telling them to largely kill everybody. Because if you read any of the texts, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Quran, okay. They're all a bloody mess. Oh, the, uh, then Yahweh said kill all those guys and cut off their, you know, foreskin and then butcher them all and then bring that girl and kill her and stone them. And it's all throughout the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Quran. And everybody who sees this video, if they're Muslim, they'll say, no, you misunderstand the Quran. It's the best book. And the people from the Old Testament and the New Testament will say, likewise, no, but Jesus is a man of peace. All the other books are bad. But yet every day there's another fundamentalist from one of those religions who commits a murder or yeah. knives people or kills an abortion doctor or does a bombing, and people will excuse it. No, it is people who take the books literally, the fundamentalists, that are the problem. I don't know why that's so hard to understand. Yeah. Now, in this case, John's absolutely right. <clears throat> the good news is the government is against this guy, right? Yeah. So there are some governments in the world, unfortunately, that would get mad at him just because he broke the law, et cetera, like Iran would be like, well, no, you don't get to just knife gay people. I'm sure they would arrest him. Uh, or Saudi Arabia the same, and because the Saudi government would then say, no, we knife them, you don't get to knife them, right? So there are governments who have this as official policy. You've gotten mm -hmm. the thought about executing, uh, partly because of our Christian fundamentalists that push that law in Uganda, executing uh, gay people. So they would say, no, no, you don't get to knife them, we get to knife them. Yeah. So there are governments that are far, far worse. Israel is one of the best uh, in this regard. When it comes regard. to gay rights, generally, That's yes. right. They, they had uh, gays in the military uh, for a long time, well, well before the U.S. did, mm -hmm. et cetera. So, yes, there are definitely differences. But <laughs> I think it's obvious. Look out for the fundamentalists. They're the problem. So when you say that fundamentalists in every religion are the problem, you're excluding Islam, right? <laughs> <laughs> Because that's why some people literally that was, that think that. Implicit. Isn't that crazy? I was on yeah. the show a couple weeks ago, and I said that you know all religion can be considered as a form of mental illness. And someone said, "Well, wouldn't it be great if he said that about Islam?" I just said all fucking religions. <laughs> <laughs> Which part of all do you not understand? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, I thought you muttered except for Islam at the end. No, okay. yeah. Could no, we all say it. it together so you guys can also including, including Islam? Islam. Yeah.